Hello students, in the last lecture we have had a lab demonstration on how to screen the presence of autoantibodies in the biofluids of cancer patients using microarray. In today's lecture we will discuss about various parameters that should be considered during image scanning and processing in microarray workflow. Detection probes have been briefly discussed in our previous lectures. These probes are major determinants of finding obtained from any microarray experiment. Detection strategies for quantifying signals from these probes in microarrays have been categorized into two basic categories, the label based and label free methods. The advancement in confocal laser scanner technology has led to the extensive development of protein microarray technology. As a result, protein microarray detection system widely uses label based methods. Scanners capture the fluorescent label signal using cool charge couple device or CCD cameras. Some scanners also employ lasers for excitation and a photo multiplier tube PMT detector. In other cases, LED is used for a uniform light source and is detected using a cool CCD in combination. Today we have with us Mr. Pankaj Khanna who will be talking to us about GenePix microarray scanner. He will first discuss about microarray scanner as well as the software which controls this and will further discuss about the data acquisition parameters that should be implemented to acquire the data from the processed microarray chips. So, let us welcome Mr. Pankaj Khanna for today's lecture. In the form of hardware, as we have discussed, there are a number of different hardware possibilities in the form of uh, gene picks right from 4000B to 4300, 4400. These are actually doing the hardware part which allows the lasers to scan the chip. So once we are ready with the chip, so it will be an interface between the CPU and the system which is allowing the data acquisition to happen as GenePix is being attached with a software called GenePix Pro software which helps in understanding how a data is being acquired with the hardware usage. So basically another software which is also used is Acuity which is actually a third level statistical analysis software. So in brief, the hardware is being attached with a data acquiring software called GenePix Pro and this GenePix Pro software is now give the results to Acuity which can be further analyzed for statistical analysis. GenePix microarray as such is based on two special designs. One of them is a non-confocal design of hardware and second is inverted chemistry. Non-confocal design is like where you have a spots in the same plane where the scanning is done is called as a 2D dimensional. Okay. Say when you go for a tissue arrays or analysis where it is very very higher, so in the form of spot size, especially at the level of imaging of scanning images, so there at the level of microscopy people use a technology of confocal microscopy so that they focus the laser at different wavelengths so at the end of the day they build a 3d image but usually for all microarrays which is the highest is the tissue microarrays it is shown that all the slides are in the same plane which is why it is non-confocal chemistry which just resides in the same plane of the slide so that is why we choose non-confocal chemistry attached with the inverted uh, chemistry of scanning which helps in the best results in the form of signal to noise ratio. So as we discussed non-confocal coupled with the inverted, uh, inverted scanning, how does it help is usually we see in the glass lights there are a lot of small deformities which our eyes can't see. Right. So what we do is we invert the slide so that it goes to the level of the same scanning and they are supported at the level of the edges with the controllers which see the deformities at the glasses. Okay. So what it helps is, it helps in looking at the deformities and directly allow the scanning to happen on the face of the scanning area. 
so what happens is because of the confocal design attached with this inverted chemistry we get best signal to noise ratio so that your data is more valid for any analysis so classically uh, microarrays are being used for the differential gene expression which usually people categorize in the gene expression format so later as the development has happened people went for snp arrays as well as a cgs which is called as comparative genome hybridizations right. they are used to look at the chromosomes apart from that protein arrays chip on chip to look for the control genes they are also being focused and the protein arrays are now really catching up in many sense because the protein is actually the biological functions what many scientists believe right. and i am also a strong believer so now people are moving from the dna to the real functional part how they are directly affected the the major uh, bottleneck was looking at the antigen antibody reactions like the proteins are all being uh, seen there is a no general formula but now the uh, field is catching up so even at the level of protein arrays this is compatible the incoming tissue array which is really in infancy is also now being compatible with gene pix pro so our scanners uh, ranges from 5 micron resolution to to 2.5 micron resolution the basic thumb rule for all the resolution is that the amount of your size of your spot be it protein or rna right. that should be 10 times that of the resolution what you are scanning with so in interestingly most of the dna is less than 50 microns and most of the protein usually stands at 200 microns yeah. so essentially the rule goes that 10 is to 1 if you say 10 is the resolution and 1 is the spot size so that is a major rule so just to give you a brief out say for example if your spot of protein is 100 microns right. in size so what best if you do at 10 microns basically you are getting 78 pixels mm-hmm. so this is actually 1 by 10 if you do by 5 micron resolution all of the pixelation will increase to 314 but the size of the image actually also increases so apart from making more than 10 times the size of spot it doesn't really help at the level of resolution if you increase the only thing is you're increasing the size but the data quality is just increased by few very very minor changes so that is why the best rule is 10 is to 1 which 5 to 2.5 micron usually is most suitable right. where the people are making the slides essentially because they are all not present so the data could be right from the zero intensity which will be equivalent to the background to the very highest intensity to best way to control the variations is looking at a photomultiplier tube actually that is nothing but once you do a fluorescence so the intensity is coming out of that so the very low expressing genes or the uh, proteins will give you very low uh, fluorescence intensity whereas the high will give very high yeah so just I will interrupt you here uh, when people scan these uh, microarray slides uh it always asks for the pmt gain right so i think that's what you're talking here photomultiplier tube and the pmt gain yes so just maybe you can clarify here like how one can adjust that uh, parameter of pmt gain so the basic thumb rule there is in any scanning you don't want to see a white spot the right. white spot essentially means the saturation and to avoid saturation exceptional cases for few controls people avoid that happening okay. so the best way is to look at a photomultiplier tube condition so it ranges actually from something like 300 to 700 which helps one control how much photon multiplication can be done so the lowest can also be seen and highest doesn't become saturated so this is how the photomultiplier tube is very very essential to control the different kind of variability within the chip which happens due to the biology so the major variations actually come owing to the different sources one could be technical one could be biological and another one is owing to the sa or the chemistry right. so uh, the technical ones in the form of hardware can be controlled at the level of pmts and when you are looking at signal to noise ratio the small play of pmt and very less with the help of laser power and then with our own uh, design of inverted uh scanning right. as well as the non confocal chemistry we are able to achieve the best so in short if by visibility you may not be able to look like what is happening to the images so in the form there here in the image which is being shown the which which looks brighter to the eye may not be a true sense right. so when you look at even the dull there the background is very low without looking at numbers if i see them i said this is dull that is bright 
but that is not true always yep. because when you calculate reality based on what you have controlled at the level of pmts and others you quickly come to a conclusion that signal to noise ratio can be seen by eyes at the level of pmt which the laser balance can be seen <laughs> so in this fashion while you are scanning a slide you can always look at that so as as you go for the signal corrections so basically what you are trying to see same thumb rules of not looking saturations right. and then you expect the image is going to be with least background so the valid uh, information which is coming in the form of intensities become a true signal basically if you scan once so image is being collected so if you want to have multiple scannings being done so that that all intensities can be averaged upon and get to a signal value it is being seen that when you increase the number of scan usually people prefer 2 to 3 so then average them so this helps in reducing the signal to noise ratio in a fashion that you get a real good intensity coming up so uh, the basic concepts in the form of hardware design the basic one is non confocal optics and another one is the focal depth the meaning of focal depth is where our laser can focus in the form where it can get or acquire the data and the depth is 64 microns which allows a wide variety of applications possible so if you want to use some slide based uh, slides that is having a cover slips so that the depth is little bit you know kind of lower so right. you want to uh, focus at a different range so in this fashion the non confocal optics with a focal depth of 64 is our major uh, feature apart from that up down upside down that is inverted chemistry is actually what we are going to use in the form of printed sides being scanned directly and controlled for the variability as discussed earlier and the resolution at 2.5 or 5 microns based on the system which is available can be also used and real time pmt adjustment pmt we have already elaborated the photo multiplier tube right. and the real time is at the level of scanning we can look at the data when the scanning is live so in this form we can control the pmt live in between the scan and then auto pmt adjustment for those who are not real buffs of looking at how to control them we have given auto pmt option this auto pmt option allows accuracy uh to get the best output but genepix pro allows the multiple scan by itself so the best pmt suitable for one application can then be seen immediately genepix classic 4000b is having 6.5 minutes of simultaneous scan the meaning of simultaneous scan is both laser scan at the same time right. so you have very less time for scanning apart from that it has got two lasers actually 635 and 532 nanometers mm -hmm. which is classically used for sci3 and sci5 and they run compatible dies right. so uh, in in view of this we have standard green and standard red emission filters to accommodate all sci3 and sci5 applications the laser power can also be adjusted in the form of 100% to 33% okay. to 10%. So based on what application and what intensity you want best, the laser power can be adjusted as well. So adjusted focal position is from minus uh, uh, 50 to 200 microns. So this allows you to focus in a different ways. So we can have a different slice compatibility coming up with the scanners. 5 micron resolution maximum it allows to go for and it can go up to 100 microns of resolution. so non confocal again it is using the non confocal optical design and any standard slide can be used for the scanning so it gives a wide applications possible in that as we discuss in brief like the genepix pro software we are going to use for data acquisition so basically there are different steps involved for uh, in the usual process of bioinformatics the first one comes is imaging right so imaging is being done in the form of multi image or single image tiff format so we use tiff format to create the images form and export these color images in 24 bit jpeg formats so these jpeg formats allow one to only see but the basic data processing will be done on tiff format so so once genepix pro is being allowed in a different sense of hardware controls 
then image acquisition can be done using the number of lasers availability it ranges from two to four and many times few application use one laser as well Thank so based on the channel type laser type you select how many to select for again on your chemistry basis and this third party image alignment and manual automatically being done so what this mean is each particular array has got different blocks which in turn contains the features so these features are actual genes or the proteins or the representative of the biological material what you are checking. Now this has to be aligned with the annotation information. So this can be done by a third party and the GenePix Pro is doing by itself in the form of automation to do the job. So automated block and feature alignment is possible. Even the different sizes and shapes of the spot can be handled right from circular square to irregular features which can be handled at the level of image alignments so in any uh, microarray after the image first thing comes is the alignment which we have just covered in the form of data acquisition because that is a very important part to cover and apart from that you have a background subtraction so that you get a true signal coming in so genepix pro does help in the background subtractions in a different format and also in the normalization of the features. So if you see the background subtraction can be done in the form of local, global and negative or morphological control. So this negative and morphological controls are subjected to the design of the slide type. Say negative controls in your slide there should be some spots which should not bind to anything and right. leave blank. And whereas the local and global can be calculated in the general space where there are no spots available and the, sp uh, the area which is not being spotted nearby your particular feature. So in this fashion background subtraction can happen and then feature viewer and feature pixel plot. So basically the major thing comes in the acquisition is after acquisition is visualization of the data and this visualization comes in the form of pixels and the plots the graphs. So graphs help us in understanding globally what is happening in short. So it gives you a real image how the things are happening. So this can also be done and there are multiple ways of calculating in the form of ratio calculations after normalization or during the normalization of the data. So analysis immediately after those involve few of the normalizations process right. which GenePix Pro can very well handle. And other important feature is the flagging of the spot. In a biology we see some spots are really not good or because of some artifact they are not supposed to be taken for analysis. Yep. So essentially we need to make that spot as flagged as good, bad or absent. So these can also be done with GenePix Pro software. Lastly, normalization of the images and the different formats is also allowed to happen in GenePix Pro. So once the image is being acquired, so immediately scientists wants how my data has been. Especially few people use even the bacterial controls which is non-related to the biology as such. Totally they want to see just the assay controls. Mm -hmm. So first they say whether my assay has worked or not. Right. So best way to do for them is looking at the graphs which are being given differentiation in the level of backgrounds. And though also can be done at the level of different histograms and the scatter plots possible. Right. And these scatter plots can be plotted once against the channel type, say laser 1 versus laser 2 or wavelength versus wavelength 2. In classical, say psi 3 versus psi 5. So how these two things have behaved for me. Right. So again, different kind of graphs and so also the images can also be exported to PDF as well as being visualized in GenePix Pro for your further screening for different QC applications. The basic GUI, which we are going to see in few minutes, actually contains three different areas. The first one is the image laser controls. So there, you wanted to see which kind of laser I am going to use. And second one is the different features which are used for the controlling of the image. And towards the right hand side, we have a pane which is allowed or helpful in hardware controls. So the basic one is in the hardware control is first, as we said that we can look at auto PMT and other adjustments which is being done. For that we use preview scan. So preview scan and that there are different tabs which allows you to go for the true scan and the preview scan and based on the laser 
which particular scan you are using. So like for example, if you start with the preview scan, you decide on which best pixelation suits me, right. which different power of laser suits me. Once you are able to do these decisions being made, you can go for your own data scan. People prefer that because there are sometimes a bleaching effect on the floor of flows. Mm -hmm. So they want to avoid the exposure for a longer time. So multiple okay. scanning is uh, avoided. So once you see even a single wavelength scan, so if your application requires only one wavelength to be scanned, there you can select in the tab only a single wavelength scan right. so, and then so also a preview scan with the data scan followed by. You can also do an automation that once you do a preview scan, you see that it is all good, then immediately it can go for that. But very rarely people use that because you see once and then only you want. There is a button towards the side where you are having a control for the scanning time. So as it is a dual channel, that even the two lasers are present in that, it is allowed to select whether you want to use one and two. Okay. And then based on one or the user application, you select both the lasers and then at the level of light scan, you control for the PMT and the which of resolution you want to use for. So these are within the same software towards the right hand side, you see the pane where you have a hardware control button there you can also look for all these different images which is being now shooting for your own biological application. So basically in the preview scan, when you are scanning your live data, you can just switch on to the histogram uh, graph. Right. There what it gives is how much red and uh, green channels are contributing towards the intensities. So you really want that they are overlapping, so they are really balancing. There could be a small variability in the beginning owing to the fact that they are just a background and then the spots coming in. So there you want that they are really overlapping after a little bit of lag, that is few seconds of lag, that's right. it. So once you are able to do them, you can see and select whether yes, this PMT is being good for me. So this is a way you check which PMT is more suitable. So you select a PMT, look at them, see the overlap, wherever there is the best overlap without saturation, you want to go with those settings. So what you see now is a GUI or graphical user interface of GenePix Pro software. Yeah. On top, it is in the form of different tab buttons, which allows you in a different work group. Say for example, image allows you in different ways and cronering of the image acquisition and histogram looks at how that image has performed. So this is what we were speaking about in the earlier slide where you can see a live kind of demo which is happening. And then lab book actually gives what all you have done in a different step wise. So what is being every movement of yours in this particular software is being logged in. And analysis can be done in the form of batch form which allows multiple uh, slides so that you can do alignment and the analysis which can be performed with the batch analysis. And once the analysis is over, results can be seen and scatter plot can be now plotted at the level of this graphical user interface. Once you're through, you can look at the reports as well. So let's look at the major function of imaging. So what and how one control for the best image acquisition. Let's quickly go through like different kind of buttons here. So now the imaging, can be done at a different wavelengths and the like preview can be done at 635 and 532. In a single laser base, the wavelength can be done at 635 or wavelength at 532. So even the ratio of the imaging, how the both has performed together can be looked at looking at a button of ratio of imaging. So this one allows you to see how the image is being done after the scan. You can look at one channel, preview channel or different channels. Okay. And now let's look at different tools which are available to you while or after the scanning. So yeah. the major ones are here where you can move across the chips in the form of this hand tool. The plus indicates the zoom tool and the other tools are actually, this is want to unzoom and you can also look at the whole image button. So once you have the image, these two becomes activated. So these two are actually for the blocks okay. and looking and the controlling the blocks and these ones are the features. So many a times what happens, usually you get the GAL file, which is actually the feature information file. So GAL stands for gene array list. So actually it gives the X and Y coordinates where each array usually is being presented in the form of blocks, which blocks in turn are in the form of features. 
so these blocks and feature positions are being recorded in gal file and then the information or annotation is given to each part so gal gal that is gene array list file essentially contains the x y and the number of columns and so also the information of each part how they are being annotated and placed on the chip so if by chance if you don't know or you are prepared by yourself these buttons here allowed to make your own blocks and create your own gl file with the help of the tool which is called as gene array list generator okay so now let's look at the control button which is towards your right side so the first one is a preview scan and then you can also have a data scan okay. one stands for one wavelength so it allows you to take image from only one wavelength and then you also have a multiple scan so you do a preview scan then you do a scan with this uh, button you also have other buttons which will light up as and when you acquire the image and this is for the analysis so the once the analysis is being done if you click this button the analysis will be performed after the alignment so this is actually open button so this is like normally your file where you want to open or save your images right. and this one is actually a flagging as we discussed the different features can be flagged you can look at once the image is available to you you can look at good bad or absent and you can give them a different ratings here again is looking at different zoom buttons so which allows you that which you want to focus on feature names or the feature id is where you want to go for a particular one the major one here is particularly this which allows a different workflow controls yeah. right yeah. so this allows in the fob a different ways can be had now let's quickly go through a one particular scan which is a simultaneous uh, simultaneous scan so both lasers will be acquired at the same time okay. so if i press on a data scan button the image the after putting your uh, inverted slides in the hardware it is scanning so you just see on the top which is very less visible so let's try to zoom inside so if i just put this button and allow you to zoom you For can region, see yeah. particular how the scanning is happening so you are looking at different image type so if i click on only one wavelength this because it's live after the scanning you can see it is going for the ratio image scan so now quickly at a histogram you see it is start coming up because it is scanning is going on live so it start reducing the so basically as we discussed it should be overlapping right. so my settings are usually looking very nice in this particular one so in this fashion the image acquisition is being happening right and you also have you we give you a power that in between the slides usually people keep barcodes right. and our system or genepix pro is compatible with reading the internal barcode which is being done mm -hmm. so so that you can have multiple scans also being possible so nowadays each slide is coming with multiple arrays because of the variable densities people are focusing right. on the custom type so this can also be done with the new software upgrade developments okay. so now as the scanning is being performed let's look like i'll save the image right. and once i save the image i would like to see how the different processes is being done yep so say for example i have saved this image in the form of say this is the east so i just want to open an image which i have just saved so so basically as we discuss each particular array can be divided into the blocks so this particular array of east contains four blocks okay. and each block is having features right. so number of feature information is given in gal so basically terminology is array block and features so i need to align that gal information of positions sure. on top of this so i have to put a gal file and do my further analysis so what i am going to do now is open a gal or gal file which allows me for alignments right so best feature of genepix pro is its capability of identifying feature by itself it's literally comes in so let's just see how the zoom button looks like so only thing you have to do here is just take your block and allow it to move to the first alignment and then what you can do is click the button over here which is for the align 
align can be done in different ways i recommend to use the first which finds all features all blocks and do automated fashion so if you click once you see software automatically finds all its features right. wherever by chance the features are absent or there are some physical deformity it say it is not present or it flag it as bad so as you see you can actually move it but it doesn't affect life as long as you have just kept once and the data is being stored but usually people ask me is it good idea if i by chance move to do once again so it's not a bad idea to because it takes few seconds to do it right so once you have done this particular alignment let's look these two slide which i said you can zoom out yeah. so you can see whole particular slide now is being scanned and aligned as well so it is a very quick process which software performs very easily for doing the job and once you have done this you can always hit a button of results now if i go to results actually this is empty yeah. so if i click on results the results are being calculated and there are some 40 different columns which will be output in a form which genpix pro understands different ways sure so just quickly looking at the major ones the major ones here are looking at this f means the intensity from different channels 635 or 532 right. and this background calculation is being done accordingly in the same laser range so once you do a corrections what happens is you want to correct your intensity mean values with the values of the background okay so this is what is the most important which usually people use for the further calculation right. apart from a ratio of means or ratio of medians which can be calculated again and being presented to you in a different column formats so each column signifies different ones like for example sd standard deviation cv coefficient of variations and then different channels coming up so right. in this fashion the results will be outputted if you are image acquisition first controlling the part then allowing you to align and then do the analysis so this is a basic steps which anybody or everybody want to do in microarray steps so once you see the images that the people end up in the form of results and you have different columns available to you so there are different ways people want to visualize how my column because number make very less sense so the best way to look is a scatter plot right. scatter plot allows you in a different ways what you are plotting at x and y axis and here if you see i am just plotting actually towards f635 median over the f635 median so you are comparing two different channels how they have behaved the so essential rule is they should mostly the micro uh, assumes all the chip chips are having the spots and which are genes which are not varying too much so right. you expect most of them to stand nearby to the origin of the center yeah. so this is what you want to look how at how close they are aligned how they are close they are aligned the yeah so they should be not too far away from each other so that they are not naive actually to each other right. because you expect there are few differences but not very very significant which can be seen at very large scales so uh, genepix pro as we discussed in acquisition software and uh, the molecular devices recommend acuity software for further data analysis which can be at the level of secondary or tertiary based on that so you do statistics as well as visualizations on a single or multiple data to handle with Molecular Devices introduces the world's simplest, most reliable automatic microarray slide scanner. Now you can walk away from scanning while the GenePix Autoloader 4200AL automatically loads, scans, analyzes, and saves results for up to 36 slides. The Autoloader accommodates microarrays on standard glass microscope slides labeled with up to four fluorescent dyes. These microarrays can contain just a few hundred spots or tens of thousands of spots representing an entire genome. As many as 36 slides can be loaded into the convenient slide carrier. As the carrier is inserted into the scanner, sensors detect the location of each slide indicated by a blue bar on the slide carrier map. On the Batch Scan tab in GenePix Pro, you have complete flexibility to define the most appropriate settings and analysis parameters for each slide or for groups of slides. You can also choose to automate scanning, analysis, and file saving steps. Enter an email address and GenePix Pro will notify you remotely when your batch is complete. 
Using the defined scanning parameters, the precision robot arm leaps into action and moves to the first slide. Our unique never-let-go grippers securely clamp the slide and carry it to the scanning area. A barcode reader records the barcode and then the slide is positioned for scanning. The GenePix Autoloader 4200AL can be configured with up to four lasers. A neutral density filter wheel can be used to attenuate the laser power if necessary for especially bright samples. The laser excitation beam is delivered to the surface of the microarray slide. The beam scans rapidly across the short axis of the slide as the robot arm moves the slide more slowly down the long axis. Fluorescent signal emitted from the sample is collected by a photomultiplier tube. As the scan proceeds, sensors detect any non-uniformity in the slide surface and the robotic arm adjusts the slide position accordingly to ensure the array surface is always in perfect focus. Each channel is scanned sequentially and the developing images are displayed on the monitor. The multi-channel TIFF images are saved automatically according to file naming conventions specified by the user. After the slide has been scanned, the precision robot arm replaces it safely in the slide carrier before picking up the next slide. As each slide is scanned, a list of each saved image with its associated settings and analysis files accumulates in the Batch Analysis tab until the batch is complete. GenePix Pro automatically finds the spots and calculates up to 108 different measurements for each spot. The results are saved as a GenePix Results or GPR file. GPR files can be saved automatically to the Acuity database for statistical analysis, clustering, and other advanced investigations. So I hope in today's lecture and uh, demonstration for various parameters, you are now familiar with the basics of scanning parameters, image processing and data acquisition. In a protein micro experiment, intensity of a spot is a representative of the interaction between the sample and analyte. To achieve this target proficiency in image processing, and data acquisition is required. As discussed, the artifacts due to the contaminants such as dust particle or even very high background on the chip, these issues make automation in image processing and data acquisition very challenging. Researchers have devised several segmentation algorithms to reduce the manual interventions. However, you have seen there is a degree manual flagging is necessary to mark the low quality spots. This data would now be pre-processed for background correction and normalization. You have also seen the demonstration of one such software, GenePix Pro Microarray Image Analysis Software for data acquisition and you will further see how it will be used for data analysis in subsequent lecture. There are several commercial softwares like protoarray prospective software and many others as well as there are several open source software. I recommend you to play with many softwares and try to explore the features. While the basic steps remain the same, many softwares offer some very specialized features which also includes sometimes the data visualization, data plotting and a better and effective ways of data representation. In our next lecture, 
we will continue our discussion on microarray experiment workflow and how to analyze the microarray data obtained from the images generated from today's lecture. Thank you.